Now for question number three, you're told to verify that the given functions form a fundamental set of solution. A fundamental set of solution of the given differential equation on this interval here and this interval here. Now, for this kind of question, there are certain things which you're being required to do. Now, the first thing is to show that the this, these two sets are fundamental. So you show that they are linearly independent. Linearly independent. The next thing is you show that you know you want to show it so it's a solution. So you show it satisfies. It satisfies the differential equation. And then the last thing is you form the general equation, the general solution. So you form. You form the general. The general solution. So I'm going to call this A, I'll call this B, and I'll call this C. So for satisfying the differential equation, we've done this past in the past video, so you could just check that out. That shouldn't be a problem. So what we're going to be doing is just how to confirm that it's actually linearly independent. So we check this and we'll also form a general solution. Now starting with the first one, so we have A, we're given that the first function is which I'm going to call y1 equals e to the power x cosine of 2x and then we are giving y2 to be e to the power x sine of 2x so to check if it's linearly independent so we'll take the run scan like we've been doing before so the run scan of y1 y2 equals so the first step is going to be e the functions themselves e to the power x cosine of 2x that this function and the next one is going to be e to the power x sine of 2x then the next step is going to be the derivative so we'll take we we'll apply the product here e to the power x times cosine of 2x as minus 2 sine of 2x plus the derivative of e to the power x cosine of 2x then the next one that's e to the power x, the derivative of sine of 2x that is 2 cosine of 2x, then plus e to the power x sine of 2x. So this is what this is what we have when we find that. So the next thing is to find the derivative. So multiply this by this, and then we multiply this by this, and then we subtract. So what we would have there is going to be, we have e to the power x cosine of 2x into e to the power x times 2 cosine of 2x plus e to the power x sine of 2x. So that's that for that. Then for the next one, that will be e to the power x sine of 2x times so it's going to be minus 2 e to the power x minus 2 e to the power x sine of 2x plus e to the power x cosine of 2x so when we expand now when we expand all we have is e to the power x times e to the power x so that gives us e to the power 2x then this times this so the 2 comes out here so we have cosine cosine squared of 2x then plus e to the power 2x, then cosine 2x times sine 2x, that will be sine 2x cosine 2x minus, so minus times minus gives us plus here, so we have 2 times e to the power 2x, so this is going to give us sine squared of 2x, then minus times positive gives us negative, e to the power x times e to the power x, so that gives us should be x here gives us e to the power 2x then sine 2x times cosine cosine 2x so this is what we have when we expand so we observe that e to the power 2x this and this they are the same thing so they cross each other so we are left with 2 e to the power 2x cosine squared of 2x plus 2e to the power 2x 
sine squared of 2x. So we could bring 2e to the power 2x out here. So we have 2e to the power 2x into the cosine squared of 2x plus the sine squared of 2x. So applying a trigger identity that says cosine squared of x plus cosine squared of x gives us 1. So this is the invariant here. So we're going to have 2e to the power 2x times 1. So that's 2e to the power 2x. And we know that the exponential function does not equal to 0. So with this, we've been able to show that. So therefore, the wrong scan of y1 and y2 is not 0. And then since it's not 0, it implies that those functions, that is y1 and y2, they are linearly independent. So that's one of the beauty of run scan. It helps us in determining very, very fast whether two functions or sets of functions, not two necessarily now, are linear independent or independent. Now, for the last one, that's um, for part B. So you should ensure you check that it satisfies this differential equation. So all we are doing is checking that it's linearly independent and then forming the general solution. So for this part here, we formed, we check it's linearly independent. And then since it's linearly independent, then the general solution, the general solution is going to be given by y equals c1, y1 plus c2, y2. That means this implies that any solution of the differential equation would be written as or can be written as a linear combination of those two functions because as being fundamental it implies that they are the basis of the solution of the differential equation so in other words y equals c1 and our y1 our y1 is e to the power x e to the power x cosine of 2x plus c2 e to the power x sine of 2x this is this is the general solution you have now for the next part is when when our y1 is this and our y2 is the other one. So we want to check if it's linear independence, then we we'll form the general solution. So we have part B. So this time around our y1 is e to the power x all over 2. And our y2 is x e to the power x all over 2. So let's just check to be sure we are doing the right problem. <laughs> okay, we're doing the right thing. And then we want to check on this interval, on the interval negative infinity to infinity. Okay, so it's all going well. So now to check this, we'll take the run scan like we've been doing so far. So the run scan of y1, y2. This is quite interesting. So we have e to the power x all over 2. And then you have x e to the power x all over 2. So when you find the derivative of this, we have half e to the power x all over 2. And the derivative of this, we apply the product rule here. So we leave this, we differentiate the other one. That will be e to the power x all over 2 divided by 2. Then plus, we differentiate this as 1 times e to the power x all over 2. And then we multiply. We multiply this by this minus this times this. So when we do that, what we obtain is I'll be e to the power x all over 2 times times what we have here as x e to the power x all over 2 divided by 2 plus e to the power x all over 2 minus this times this, that's going to be x e to the power x all over 2 times half e to the power x all over 2. So when you expand this, what we have is x all over 2, e to the power, the loss of indices here, so we have e to the power x plus e to the power x, that's this times this, then minus half x e to the power, x e to the power x. So what you observe here is this and this, they are the same thing, that is this and this, they are the same thing, so they cross out, so we are now left with e to the power x, which we also know that it's not equals to zero. It's known that all exponential functions can give you zero on a set of real numbers. So we've been able to show that the wrong scan of y1 and y2, 
does not equal to zero and this implies that y1 and y2 are linearly independent so you actually the basis of the solution the solution um, system so the solution space of the differential equation so this implies that the general solution is going to be this any solution can be written as a linear combination of the bases c2 y2 that is uh, y equals c1 e to the power x all over 2 plus c2 x e to the power x all over 2 and that completes the problem